Welcome back to Medina County, Texas GMRS. As I've been promising for a while, we are doing a review on the RA25 Redivus Mobile Radio. Finally got to test it, play with it enough to give you my honest opinion. So let's get right down to it and let you know what I think about this little unit. All right, so to begin, I want to say I like it, but there are some things that Redivus could have done better. Number one, just out of the box, getting it plugged up, I love the display, right? Nice, bright, vivid colors. Um, you can tell it's easy to manipulate with the mic. I, I actually love the mic. It has the channel up, down, button up top. It has the indicator when you're transmitting here. Um, it's heavy. It feels good. Um, the speaker on this, you'll be able to tell here in just a minute, uh, it has a great speaker on it. One thing right out of the box that I notice, and I'm guessing because it's just a 20-watt unit, um, there's no fan on it, right? Um, so you're going to hear me make a few comments on some of these clips that I'm going to add in that the radio does get hot. Okay, it never got hot, but it got very warm, um, more warm than I am used to with the QITs and some of the other ones that I played with. Now, I was originally going to do, I ordered these as a set with the RB27 handhelds and this. It came with this and then two RB27s, and they are nothing alike. I actually love, I have come to love the RB27s. Um, this one, on the other hand... I'm kind of on the fence about. So the first thing, the first gripe, the first complaint, the first bitch, whatever you want to call it that I have is programming. So let me show you a clip of some of the struggles you're going to have programming it. This radio comes out of the box with all those crazy tones and everything set. So you cannot just use it right out of the box with other radios unless you know how to go in there and change the tones or you program it okay you hook it to the computer and program it so let's take a look at that clip i'll see you back here in just a second all right so i want to show you all the programming software for the ra25 um it cannot be programmed via chirp so you have to use the ra25 underscore 2.00 software for programming this particular radio. <clears throat> I've only made minor changes. Um, I went in and changed some tones, but you can tell this is directly uploaded from the radio with only this uh, line 25 and 27 being changed. So you can tell that this radio comes with all the bullshit uh, tones already preset. They're not set to just being wide open. So in order to use this radio with most other radios, you will have to program this. Now, I can tell you, I have had issues with this particular software. It is not user-friendly. Um, I, I haven't even figured out how to add a frequency yet, right? So I'm on line 34 just wanting to enter something, and I'm double-clicking the box. I'm trying to type in a frequency and it will not let you. To change any of these other frequencies or to, I think it's the starting steps, um, you have to double click on the, the little more arrows over here in this column. So let's just double click on this one. It brings it up and as you can see, I am clicking on the receive and the transmit frequency and it does not allow me to add it. I can change the power output. It does not allow me to change anything else other than if the compander is off or on. It'll let me check this box, but it is it is not letting me add a frequency. For any of these frequencies up here, the pre-programmed GMRS frequencies, if you want to change the tones, um, you can come over here to the double arrows. You can click it. It will slowly come up, and you can tell here it does not allow you to change the frequencies. 
you can put a channel name. Once again, you can change the output, the, the transmit power, you can change the tone, the type of tone, the squelch mode, you can change all sorts of stuff. You can uh, add it in scan skip, put it in a talk around, change the compander, right? You can do all of that, but it is not letting you change the frequency. Now, I'm doing this, not watching any YouTube videos. I think that these radios should be a lot more simple to program than this. I mean, for the love of Pete, I hooked this Vertex repeater that you hear humming behind me up to its software with its cable, and it was more simple than this, you know, little $125 radio. So, Redivus, get your shit fixed, make this programming a lot more simple, or somehow or another get it added onto Chirp so it is not so difficult to program. All right, we're programming or attempting to program this little Redivus RA25, and I've already run into a problem. So I'm gonna show you, I don't have anything plugged in, but notice I've had to plug this thing into a dummy load. Um, you shouldn't have to do this on any radio, but let me show you why. I'm trying to do this one-handed, so bear with me. So when I plug in the programming cable, it automatically starts transmitting and so this is already an issue and the radio will get hot so let's turn it off kick it back on all right it's not transmitting now so i'm gonna see if i can work on programming this um another issue i ran into see it's plugged in everything is is hooked right it's, it's already warm just from that few seconds of transmitting there so watch I'm gonna come up here I'm just gonna read from the radio and you're gonna watch it with me so okay so it's reading of course it's gonna key up here right we know because it's sending data back and forth but watch what happens it goes off, it, it's done, it goes off, it comes on, and if you're not paying attention, watch what it, it did this to me before. Oh, see, there it went. It started transmitting again. It kicks itself into TX mode. So the problem, the reason you're going to want to hook this up to a, a dummy load is if you inadvertently forget, I don't care about signals going out into the air or anything else, you're going to end up burning your radio up if if you're not paying attention i can tell you it's already very warm so this is definitely a problem that redivus needs to figure out how to fix all right so as you can see i'm not happy with the programming i think redivus could done could have done a much better job now i was still able to program the frequencies that i wanted on this right um but without having to go do a bunch of research and watch videos and read vlogs or whatever you do to, to find your instructions, uh, it, it should be more simple in my opinion. All right. We did a power test with this unit. So let me show you what it looks like on the watt meter. I was pretty impressed. Let's take a look. All right. While we're sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick power test. This is on one of the, uh, high uh, transmit power frequencies. We've got it hooked up. I know some of y'all don't like the patch cables going to it. Sorry, that's what we're gonna use. We're going, as always, middle set of numbers. This is advertised, whoa, come back, there we go. Middle set of numbers, this is advertised as 20 watts. It is a GMRS only radio, so let's see what we're kicking. Ready, set, go. Wow. 19 and a half just over 19 so not bad not bad at all let's kick it down to a low power see what that does you can see my fat fingers here go to channel one i will say i do like the display of this radio all right so now we're on a low power once again middle set of numbers 
low power, you're getting right over six watts. All right. And of course, those who want to complain about the patch cables, uh, yeah, you're probably going to get that a quarter of a watt back. So, um, not too bad on power. Let's take it out in the field and test it and see what we can get with it. All right, here's one quick test on the uh, poor man's repeater, uh, just so you can hear the talkback feature. Uh, we're only a few miles away. Um, for those of you who have never seen a poor man's repeater or a simplex repeater, uh, this is kind of what it looks like or sounds like. WRJC 281 testing on PMR 650, one, two, three, three, two, one. All right, so we know we're getting out on it. Once again, we're only about three or four miles from the house. Uh, pardon my sexy uh, radio holder there. That's what you're getting today because this isn't going to be permanently installed. Uh, let me get down the road and we'll check it from about 13, 14 miles. All right, we're at the Hondo Airport, about 13, 14 miles away from the repeater with this little RA25. We're going to give it a test and see if 20 watts, uh, how it does. WRJC 281 to WRTH 378, uh, testing from the Hondo Airport. Uh, WRJC 281 is WRTH 378. Yeah, you're coming through. All right, 10-4. Uh, well, I'm uh, kind of liking this little thing. It is giving me some issues programming it. Uh, it's not the easiest to program, and you cannot use Chirp. Uh, but I'll have a video up later today for you to see. Okay, you got that, buddy. Sounds good. All right, I'm going to uh, head towards the Hennis, uh, see if we can test that out out there, and I'll catch you in just a little bit. WRJC 281, I'll be uh, monitoring and uh, testing sporadically. All right, so let's give it a shot on the PMR 650. Um, that antenna is only about uh, 15, 20 feet in the air. Uh, so let's give that a shot. WRJC 281 testing on PMR from the Hondo Airport. All right, well, it sounds really good. Let me show you the current setup we have. I did not use the Midland antenna. If y'all want to see an airplane, there's the airplane fixing to refuel. Um, I did not use the Midland. What I did today is I just used the, um, just using the little 3 dB gain uh, browning and just ran it through the window right here. Um, so that's what we're using to test right now. All right, we're heading to Dehennis to give it a shot. For All right, WRJC 281 to WRTH 378. I have Dehennis in sight. How is that coming through? Ah, oh, we may have a problem. May not be hitting it. I know we broke the, 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 the squelch on the repeater because we got the tail, but he did not come back. Let me try him again. WRJC 281 to WRTH 378 from the Hennis, just crossing the city limits. Can you copy? You can kind of tell how you're going to go through because of the way the tail breaks up. Four two eight. Still copy, a little bit choppy, but still copy. All right, 10-4, we're going to go into town. We've got this spot that we normally stop at, so uh, let me go over there and see if we can get you from there, buddy. 10-4, copy that. 
So you can hear it's getting choppy. So we know this is kind of the outer limits and it always has been um, for the current antenna. Uh, I am surprised that this 20 watt is punching through. Uh, we know we are getting a true 20 watts at this point after putting it on the meter. Uh, so let us get pulled over here in here. Let me show you the big town of Dehennis here. This is it. All right, here you go. If any of you live around here, you know I'm, I'm being facetious. Uh, but we're gonna get turned around and we'll get this tried out. All right, WRJC 281 to WRTH 378. We're in downtown DeHennis. How is that coming through? That is almost amazing on 20 watts, and we have had trouble punching through from here at times. I'm going to slip uh, over to PMR and give that a test real fast, and then I'll be right back on Dunley. We may even go a little further than this. And for a copy, switch it to uh, PMR. WRJC 281 testing on PMR from DeHennis. How is that coming through? All right, well, I didn't expect Bill to answer. He doesn't switch back and forth all the time, um, but we know we are hitting it. So we're gonna go a little bit further to see if we can punch it. Let's go to the next town in line from there. All right, we are just, I'm gonna show you this. I don't know how well you can see it. This is kind of an uphill, uh, part of the road right here and I think it goes downhill after you crest that right now we're currently sitting I, I can't see it sitting at about a thousand seventeen feet we know the house the antenna is sitting uh, the house is at 960 um, so let's give Bill a try from here and then this is probably I'm, I'm certain this is the limits of this radio WRJC 281 to WRTH 378 once again uh, we're testing from about a thousand foot elevation here in uh, just west of Dehennis. How is this coming through? Yeah, from that elevation, you're definitely coming through clear, Don. You're definitely coming through clear. And you are as well. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with this uh, Browning antenna that's a lot better than the Midland. So I'm kind of kind of impressed by that. All right, man. Well, we're going to head back. I appreciate your help this morning. I owe you one. And uh, if you if you get bored later, you know we're going to the watering hole for some karaoke. One thing that I need to throw in here real fast is the instruction manual that comes with the RA25 is probably one of the shittiest instruction manuals I have ever seen. It truly has only five pages of instructions for this radio basic operation right um talks about what each feature is but these are pretty generic instructions and features right it doesn't give you information on the upper channel and then you you're able to have a lower channel doesn't give you any of those but truly it's only five pages of instructions so I think Redivis could uh, have done a better job with their manual as well. So, as you can see, there are no power issues with this. It's kicking 20. I mean, let's be honest. The QYT that's sitting right over there, it's a dual band radio. So we know that when you get up in the GMRS frequencies, you're going to lose some power. This one is still kicking out more than that one, even at a 20 watt radio. So keep that in mind. And you could hear the clarity uh, when Bill and I were talking. So very impressed with that. If we could just figure out how to program the damn thing, this would be my new go-to mobile. So all in all, I'm going to tell you, I think it's, 
I've got to give it a six, right? Ten on a, on on the likability scale, right? And all of that is coming from the fact it's so hard to program. They need to do a better job, get it on chirp, so people like me who just want to be able to pull stuff out of the box and use it and don't have to do weeks of homework on how to program thing, um, th that's what it needs to be like. It, it needs to be much more simple than what they have it now. Um, if they could fix the programming issues, the, the, the simplicity of use, the ease of use, this would be a true winner, especially the power it's putting out, the clarity, the size, right? The microphone's great, and I, I don't think it's a bad radio. It just needs to be uh, easier to program. So if you're one of these guys and you're into that and, and don't mind doing the research, this is a damn good radio. For other guys like me who just want to take it out of the box, stick with a QYT, all right? So that's it in a nutshell. I would highly recommend this radio once again to somebody who is into doing research and, and tinkering. Um, I don't think it's a bad deal at all for about 125 bucks. Thanks for watching this review. I hope this was helpful in you making your decision whether you want to buy one of these or not. Uh, you may be seeing this radio again. You might be surprised. So keep your eyes peeled. Got some more big news coming up down the road. Thanks for watching my videos. Subscribe, like this video, share it with a friend. We're working our way up to a thousand, and I appreciate the support, comments uh, from each and every one of y'all. I hope you have a great day. Thanks.